Do you need to incorporate text onto your 3D printed parts? Whether you're printing a serial number for part identification, incorporating tool instructions, adding your company logo, or even just want to inscribe something fun, the print quality and legibility matter. Today, I'm going to show you my best practices for designing text onto 3D printed parts. And we're going to take a deep dive into Fusion 360 and go through my design intent step by step and ultimately arrive at an optimized 3D printed part with text features. Before I get started, this part that I'm showing you, it was printed on Mark Forge Metal X in 17.4 stainless steel. But the same design principles should transfer over to most other FFF 3D printers and the materials that you're using. I'm Ross, and this is Reinforced. Now we're in Fusion 360. What we're looking at here is an end of arm tool and gripper and the bulk of the design is complete. But the last thing that we need to do is to add our text that will include our tool number, revision, and material that this part includes. We wanna incorporate this into the print and tattoo it so it's permanently addressed into the part itself. Being the last step in the design process, we need to pick where on this part we add the tool number. We have three main locations. The first one's on the top of the part here. The second one's on the bottom. And then the third is on this wall. All three of these locations will not interfere with the actual functionality of this tool itself. So how do we think about which position is best for this text? Well, the first option is gonna be this layer right here. And this is gonna be our build surface that we have designed the part for early on. Since this is our first layer, it's usually not a position that you wanna put the text because the first layer is the most critical layer that determines the success of the subsequent layers later on. If we can avoid introducing more complexity into this layer, our print is gonna become more reliable. Now we have two remaining options for the location of our text, on the top of the part or on the sides of it. And both of these are more than suitable, but one's gonna be better than the other. And let me explain why. Now a useful analogy for the anatomy of a 3D printed part might be a sticky note. Each individual layer is represented by a single sheet of paper and each sheet of paper has a specific profile, which in this case is just a simple square. When you put all those pieces together, you get a block. Now, if we were to put our text on the top piece of this paper, the nozzle is gonna have to draw that shape just like you would do with a pen. If I want to draw a bunch of letters in very different shapes, I'm gonna be limited by my penmanship, which has never really been my thing. And the smaller we get and the more detail we get, the less legible it will become. But if we instead put the text on the side of the part and only make these small cuts into each profile of that individual layer, we'll get much finer resolution on the part and be able to go much further with the shapes and the sizes that we incorporate the text. So we're not trying to squeeze things into our design as well as get letters and words that are illegible to our machine operators. So when we take this back into the part, since we have design freedom to choose there or here, whenever possible, it's better to design your text on the sides of the part than the roofs of your part. So now that we've picked the location for our text, next thing we're gonna do is create a sketch on that plane. And we're gonna use our text tool and add the specific metadata that is relevant for this tool. You gotta refine the size, space it out. We'll go down to a certain size where it all fits into one sheet. So we picked a height of three and we're gonna have some constraints here. And the most specific one is gonna be how wide of a letter we have in the distance between each shape. So we put it on the sides of the wall and we added our text. And now we wanna make it as big as possible so it's the most legible. But we also wanna make it small enough that it fits into this area. And the smallest that we can go when we put the text on the walls is a width of 0.4 from one point to the next. If we were to put it on the roof of the part, the smallest that we can go is 0.6 millimeters. So putting it on the walls gives us more freedom to fit into smaller spaces. Now let's move on to fonts. Deciding font can be a personal preference, but I tend to go with Rubik. It's common and it's pretty uniform all the way around. Helvetica, Arial, Verdana, these are great choices as well. When you think about what font you want to use, try to make sure that it's uniform in dimension. 
Otherwise, you may get some inconsistencies in the printed result. And that's why I recommend sans serif over serif fonts. So for those of you that may not know, serif fonts have small lines attached to the ends of the letters. It may have different size weights per line, while sans serif fonts have none. Now, as I said, my personal preference is Rubik. So I'll select that and add it to our part. So now that we got the text designed, we now need to turn this into a three-dimensional feature. And we can either extrude it out of the part or we can cut it into the part. Emboss versus deboss. Now both of these are viable methods, but the one thing that you want to consider is if you do extrude it out of your part, you need to ensure it's not going to interfere with any of the functionality of the application. I typically extrude boss. It just prints better because it will require less supports when it's designed to the correct depth of the part. Now, if we come to our part, we're going to select our text. And now the last design decision that we need to make, how far do we extrude it out? What I typically use is 0.25 millimeters. This is a very fine detail, but reduces the amount of overhang that the part has and will eliminate any need for supports. And this applies for both extruding and cutting into the part. You may go thicker when you cut into the part if you want to have better legibility and give some contrasting colors into the text itself. So we'll command Fusion to do 0.25 and that will generate this 3D printed boss. And now we have our three-dimensional shape tattooed onto the part and this will permanently allow us to know exactly what part it is, when it was made and what it was made out of. Now, if your design calls for this part to be extruded into the part itself, the only change that we have to make here is change our distance from positive 0.25 to negative 0.25 and change the command or the operation to cut. And now we have the three-dimensional text extruded into the part. And that's it. We have our part designed and optimized to include our text. We're now ready to print. So why don't we recap what we just learned. Be aware of how you plan to orient your part while printing. This will help dictate the placement of your text and help you decide where the optimal location is to place this. Now my recommendation is to print your text on the walls of your part. This is gonna give you the most amount of freedom and make it the most legible text. You can either emboss it or deboss this text. You're gonna to wanna to use a uniform font, preferably something that's a sans serif, and your font width should be around 0.8 millimeters thick, but no smaller than 0.4 millimeters. And now the depth that you extrude or cut it into should be about 0.25 millimeters. Now you may go a little bit thicker when you're embossing your text, but be aware of how these supports get generated at those thicknesses. If you follow these rules, your design is gonna be looking sharp and it's gonna have minimal post-processing after it's done printing. Now, for those of you that have design constraints and are absolutely required to put the text on the roof of your part, I'd first recommend embossing this text. My font recommendations still apply. However, the width of this font should be increased to around one millimeter to give it a thicker profile and make it easier to print. So when you're on the roof, the depth should be about two to four layers thick. Depends on your layer thickness. And lastly, if you're printing logos or other types of design features, all these tips should apply seamlessly. Get creative with it. I really hope that you found this video helpful, but do you still have a question? Reach out in the comments. I'd love to get back to you on it. Like and subscribe to our channel for more 3D printing tips, tricks, and how-tos. Thanks a lot for watching.